Hi, welcome back to Educator.com. Uh, we're going to be talking about frequency distributions again, but now we're going to be going a little more into detail about their features. So, in the last lesson, we covered how to look at the data in Excel. So, there's a check mark off of that one. And we talked about how to go from data to frequency tables using our count if function, and from frequency tables to visualizations. But now we're going to take another look at those same examples that we looked at before, except now we're going to be talking about the features of these distributions. In particular, we're going to be looking at their shape. There are a couple of shapes you should know after this. Uh, one is uniform distributions. Another one is going to be called unimodal. Yet another is called bimodal. And a special one that we're going to be looking at called normal. We're also going to be talking about center. We're not going to be talking about how to calculate the center of the distribution. We're going to be talking about how to think about the center um, conceptually in three different ways. Mean, median, and mode. But we're not going to be talking about how to calculate it yet. Then we're also going to be talking a little bit about spread. How spread out is this distribution? And finally, we'll also mention outliers, gaps, and clusters whenever they're relevant. So recall example one. Here we looked at a data set of 100 Facebook friends, and we looked at whether more of these friends are born in a particular month or another. Note here that it really seems to be that no particular month is super popular. This is what we call a uniform distribution. If you sort of squint and blur your vision a little bit, it, it's almost like there's a flat line here, right? And everybody is sort of hovering close to that line. No one uh, month is more frequent in births than any of the other months by a lot. Um, some of these months are a little more frequent, but only by a little bit. You could see there's relatively little change from month to month here. Other uniform distributions also look, um, also look like this sort of rectangle or flat shape. And these distributions might be anything from deaths occurring on days of the week. Is there any reason to believe that one particular day is more favorable to die on than another? Um, or in rolls of a six-sided dice, um, is there a particular reason to believe that one side might come up more frequently than another? Uh, not if it's a fair-sided dice. All right. So remember, this is now example two. Um, in example two, we looked at the same data set again, and we looked at the age distribution in this sample. Here, we don't have a uniform distribution. No matter how much you squint your eyes, you're not going to see sort of a flat shape. You see a peak right here. And because of that, this peak, often called a mode, the most frequent member, uh, the most frequent value, um, this peak makes this a unimodal distribution. So in a, I'm not going to call it example two anymore. I'm going to call it a unimodal distribution. We'll add on to that. Not only that, but this shape is what we call skewed. So if I decide to just draw a little, a light little sketch over this guy, we see that it has this long, what we call tail. This tail goes out towards um, the right side, the, the larger values. Because it's skewed and the tail is to the right, we, called it, we call it skewed right. So it's not only unimodal, but it's also skewed right. You often have a skewed distribution when um, you have some sort of minimum or maximum value that these values are all bumping up against. So Facebook, I think you have to be 13 years old to sign up and maybe a lot of 14 and 15 year olds, their parents are not letting them sign up. So um, the bottom end of it, there's sort of a wall. Some, there's like an imaginary wall there. And um, the most popular, at least in our sample, seems to be in the 20s. 
and some of the older people use it. There's no limit on that. You could be 100 years old and still use Facebook. So um, since there's no limit on that, that tail can go on for a really long time. Now, these outliers out here, they are often called, um, you could think of them as oddballs, but we call them outliers. Tails are often made up of outliers. Note also that because this is skewed right, if we drew a line of symmetry from the mode, and we imagined folding this distribution on itself, we wouldn't have, um, we wouldn't have two sides that match up, right? So we call this asymmetric as well. So we learned a lot here. It's unimodal, it's skewed right, and it's asymmetric. All right, now here we'll learn yet another term. We see there are these gaps. These are called gaps, <laughs> nice and easy. And if we had a couple of people uh, clustered in a group, we call that a cluster. So a lot of these terms are pretty normal words that you would use in everyday life. All right. All right, now let's move on to example three. In example three, we were really interested in what the height distribution was in this sample. Now, compare this, compare this distribution to our previous skewed distribution. Is this skewed to the right or skewed to the left? Is there some sort of tail here? Um, not really. There's no real tail that I can see. But we do see that there are sort of a couple of places that are sort of popular modes, most frequent values. These are 64 and 69. These seem to be sort of the popular peaks. It's because we have one mode here and another mode here, this is no longer a unimodal distribution. This is what we call a bimodal distribution. So instead of calling it example three, I'm gonna call it bimodal. And is it sort of symmetric? Well, sort of. Um, you could sort of see it as almost having um, maybe like two bumps like that. So it's sort of symmetric, but not, not perfectly symmetric. Um, there's no tail, there's no, um, there's no, uh, there's not very many gaps. There's, there's maybe a little bit of a gap here, but not very much. Um, so this is what we call a bimodal distribution. Now, let's think about this. Height distributions. Well, our Facebook friends are both males and females. And since males tend to be taller than females on average, it might really be that there's a cluster of males up here and a cluster of females down here that we can't see right now. So let's look at these two uh, distributions, males and females, separately. All right, so here's just the distribution of male heights from our sample. Notice that here, um, it's, it's not really asymmetric because when you look at this mode, here's our mode right here, and you draw sort of a line of a line of symmetry and you imagine folding it on it on itself, then uh, you get you get a pretty good um, oops. you get a, a pretty even looking uh, hill right there. Let me just erase this line real quick. You get a pretty even looking hill with roughly similar numbers of people on this side as on this side. So this is what we would call a roughly symmetric distribution instead of example 4a. It's also what we call unimodal because we only have one mode right here. All right, what else do we notice about this? Well, we don't really see a tail. Um, and furthermore, it seems that this distribution seems to have a lot of people piled up 
around 69 inches with um, a, lot, a lot more people close to 69 and fewer people sort of farther away from 69, like at 75 or around 64, right? So this is what we call a normal distribution. You could think of a normal distribution like a pile, right? And usually a normal distribution well, not usually. By definition, a normal distribution is both unimodal and symmetrical. Now, in a normal distribution, typically the mode as well as the mean or the average is going to be the same. To think about the word average, you might want to think of it like this in terms of distributions. Imagine cutting out this distribution, like out of cardboard, and then trying to balance it on your finger. Where the distribution would balance that point, that's the mean, right? So although we'll learn to calculate this later, that's sort of the image I want you to think of when you think of the mean. Now, well, if we draw a smooth line around this distribution on either side of the mode, um, at about 60% of the height of this peak, so let's see, that's about 50%, so around here, at about 60% of the height of this peak, you'll have what's called the point of inflection. Point of inflection. Here's what's so dang important about the point of inflection. Although you can't see it very well from my picture, I'll exaggerate it. The point of inflection is where the distribution goes from being concave to being convex. Right? So that's, that's about right. And this point of inflection is going to be important later because this distance right here, this distance is going to be called, uh, I'll put it up here, the standard deviation. Later we'll learn exactly how to calculate that. But that point of uh, inflection and the standard deviation is going to be really critical to our understanding of other distributions as well. All right, so here, we see both males and females um, heights plotted on this frequency distribution. So just so you could see, here's sort of our, our female distribution. And here is sort of our male distribution. Right? Here you could see there's roughly a normal distribution for the females as well as the males. Right? So we're going to say two normal distributions, right? They're both unimodal, and they both are roughly symmetric on both sides. There's no tail, um, no big gaps or clusters. Oh, there's a big cluster in the middle, and that's about it. Um, and here, what we thought before was a bimodal distribution, we actually see there's actually two normal unimodal distributions instead. All right, so now let's summarize what we've learned so far. Um, it, we've learned four different shapes, uniform, skewed to the right or to the left, um, bimodal, and normal. We've also learned asymmetric and symmetric. So here I'm asking, hmm, is this one symmetric or is this one asymmetric? Well, the uniform one, yes, it's largely symmetric because rectangles are symmetric. Skewed, are they symmetric? No. Because either the right tail is long or the left, left tail is long. Uh, bimodal, are they symmetric? Mm, this one's sort of a sometimes. There can be times when these are symmetric. For instance, if you have two that look like that, 
it's roughly symmetric. But you may also have bimodal distributions that look like this, right? And then that one doesn't look as symmetric, right? Normal distributions, yes, they are symmetric, always. And I'll just draw these here, just so that you know. All right, so now let's talk about the centers. Does it have a, cl does it have a clear mode? Well, here, it doesn't really have a mode. There's not one most frequent uh, value. In fact, all the values are roughly similarly frequent. So we'll say, no, it does not have a clear mode. Typically, the skewed distributions are unimodal. So yes, unimodal. What about bimodal distributions? Do they have a mode? Yes, they are overflowing with modes. They have two modes, in fact. Sometimes more, you could have trimodal, right? So yes. What about normal distributions? Well, of course, it has a mode because it's also unimodal. All right, now let's talk about spread. What does spread look like here? Well, the spread is roughly even, but and it goes as far as the values go, right? Does it use the point of inflection? No. What about in a skewed distribution? Do we use point of inflection there? Well, in a skewed distribution, the point of inflection is weird because the point of inflection is going to cut it up at different places depending on whether you look at the right side of the mode or the left side of the mode. So point of inflection isn't quite as useful here. In a bimodal distribution, sometimes you could use the point of inflection, but it gets complicated. So we'll write it. We'll write in. It's complicated. Really, it's only for the normal distribution that the point of inflection comes in really handy. It's a resounding yes. And at the, the distance from the mode or the center to that point of inflection, distance is called the standard deviation. 